Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Steve from Rockstar Eater coming to you with another rocket episode. And I'm gonna be doing something that's pretty insane. I'm gonna be visiting five of the best seafood restaurants in Los Angeles back to back in this ultimate seafood tour in LA. As you know, you can find great seafood all over the US. Even here in LA, there's a lot of great seafood places that you gotta check out of all different cuisines. So what I'm gonna do is to hit up five of some of the best uh, seafood restaurants that you can find here in Los Angeles and then at the end of the episode I'm gonna give you my vote on what I think was the best overall experience of these five amazing seafood restaurants that I'm about to visit so definitely stick all the way to the end of this episode so that you can get the lowdown on some of the best seafood restaurants you can hit up in Los Angeles and my personal pick of what I think is the best seafood restaurant in LA and also if you're new to this channel take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I put out the these food and travel videos weekly that you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now, and I'm gonna begin with my first spot, traveling to Newport Seafood in San Gabriel. And I have a special guest with me today. So Sally, you've been to this restaurant before, right? Yeah, I grew up in this neighborhood, and uh, my family and I have been here. This is like our special treat, you know, um, for birthdays and my dad's birthdays, uncle's birthdays, good friends' birthdays, and you know, they're willing to wait hours for this this good food. Yeah, no kidding. So this restaurant, like I said, is a Chinese restaurant, but it has like some Vietnamese influences in it as well, right? Yeah, Vietnamese and Cambodian. They're actually Chinese from Cambodia. Oh, I see. I'm so excited to eat this. And by the way, guys, uh, if you want to check Sally out, I really highly recommend it. Go to the video description link below so that you can check out her restaurant, Iron Teapot, a really awesome dim sum restaurant. I mean, we're not at dim sum right now, but I know some of you guys, if you want dim sum, check Sally out in her link at Iron Teapot in the video description below. This is the uh, basil leaf clams. That's what they call it, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, this is one of their house specialties here. It's uh, fresh clams. I believe they're manila clams that's uh, stir fried with basil leaf and I guess some sort of special house sauce, right? Yep. Oh, that's good. The sauce is so good, man. It's so good. But do you, can you tell the difference that these, you could tell they were live? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They never cook from frozen. Yes, yes. And you can tell because uh, it, it just tastes like fresh. Like it's not been dead for what, like two days or three days or four days? Or frozen. Or frozen, yeah, yeah. There's totally a difference. So when you come to this restaurant, this is one of the highlight foods on the menu, this, this uh, basil clam. So definitely get it, especially if you love manila clams. Mm -hmm. And now we're hitting the main course, including this shrimp, which is from the tank, right? Yep. Wow. Yeah, it's fresh. Yes. Um, in Chinese, we call this the the large, the large headed shrimp. And, <laughs> and here's the other thing that might gross people out, but it's all about the eggs. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> this man. means it's good. Oh, it's pregnant. But yeah, for the rest of it, you definitely need to peel the hard shell off the body because you can't eat it. It's a good flavor. It's like this sweet, like um, mm. scallion. Ah. Yeah, it is sweet. This is quite amazing. This is their whole, it's like a fried fish? Yes. Okay, yeah, I can it's, tell. And then uh, the owner was just explained to me that they pride themselves at, this, is get, this gets fished over at Newport in the morning. So uh, it's, it's brought here in the morning. Wow. So it's really, really fresh. Wow, that is so incredible. Yeah, this is a whole fish that's like deep fried. And it's supposed to have like a sweet and sour and spicy flavor to it, right? Yep. Well, that thing is like really, the flavor is like pungent. Mm -hmm. It's like sharp, the flavor. Right? No, I mean in a good way, <laughs> not in a bad way, but it's basically another way of saying like it hits you in the mouth once you put it in your mouth. Maybe I just got too much sauce in my mouth, but it's so good though. That's so good that it was fried, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you see? Like fried, bam, right there. Sour and sweet and spicy, exactly the way the menu described it. And the garlic. And garlicky. Right? Yeah. Mm. Yes, and the lobster, this is really the main attraction. If you come here, everybody gets the lobster. Yeah, it is really expensive, but you know, people get it still because it's really that good. Oh. Oh. 
I have no words. Really no words to describe. Isn't that texture amazing? Mm -hmm. It's really fresh. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can tell it was this thing was um, was live. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. It's a big difference. Yeah, I can't rave enough about this lobster. It's so good. Like that's why I gotta get me another piece right now. So when you walk in here, you'll notice that this seafood market is really big. You already see the huge selection of fish that they bring in every single day from all around the world. You can really have a shopping day at the market itself, but thankfully they added the cafe location very recently. I think about 13 or 14 years ago. They started out in 1939 over there by the Santa Monica Pier. So they were selling all this seafood off of that pier to customers and even to restaurants and businesses. And then they moved here. Ooh, okay, so let's see. I don't usually eat my oysters by itself. I know some people do, but I need to put the house-made cocktail sauce and some of this vinaigrette on top as well. Whoa. Oh, that is amazing. That's so good. You can tell the amazing freshness of it. it. Has so much juice. It's soft. When it goes in, it melts in your mouth. Next thing you know, it's gone. Party starts and party is over, but it's such a flavor bomb. This is the ahi tuna tartare, which is one of their most popular things on the menu. Avocado, cucumber, tomato, basil, chives. A little bit of that uh, sriracha chili sauce with that balsamic glaze. You can kind of see it on top with the wontons on the side. This is the lobster roll. Yes, lobster roll is a thing in California, especially Los Angeles. The fresh lobster is right in the center of that toasted bread. Ooh, yeah. Main lobster meat with lemon aioli, chives, butter toasted, brioche, and it comes with some fries on the side. And this is one of their entrees. They have a lot of fish on the menu. But definitely, I heard that the salmon is the thing to try. The grilled salmon with grilled asparagus on the bottom, cherry tomatoes, and lemon caper butter. That's all that yellow sauce that you kind of see lightly all around. Wow. Yeah, you gotta have the crispy wontons with it because it makes it just so much better. It's really so much better. All right, so now I'm gonna try the lobster roll. And I like the fact that this Lobster roll is not way too creamy. You know how there's some lobster rolls where they put so much mayo or aioli inside of it that it really just overwhelms it. It's almost like a potato salad type of lobster roll. But here, it looks like it's pretty light. So you're gonna get a lot more of that natural flavor of the lobster inside of it. Oh. Mmm. Yes, 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 yes. See, so the first thing that comes to my mind is that there's so much lobster meat inside of here. And that's what you want, a lot of this lobster meat where you can taste the crunchiness of the lobster meat, which is already pretty fresh. And this salmon is so soft, very, very soft. Oh, oh man, that is mind blowing. That salmon is so good. You know that lemon caper butter is amazing because it makes it richer, more buttery, and that caper adds a good sourness to this whole thing. And this fish is already so soft on the inside, but then since it's been grilled, it's charred. The skin is charred on the outside. That's like the perfect way to make a grilled salmon. When I go to restaurants, like ordering salmon, I always feel like I can make it at home just as good. So that's why I never really felt the need to order salmon. But people were saying that the salmon here it's so amazing and I needed to try it. And now I can see why. This salmon is truly worth ordering. It's been here for about three years now at this specific location since 2018, but this isn't the only location because it came from the East Coast. They have a few locations over there as well. And I heard that this family business actually goes way back to 1899. So yes, it is a 120 year old 
family business going on. And now that they have expanded, they've come here to LA, I am so happy to be trying this East Coast oysters and all this delicious seafood that they got going on here. So now we are about to dig into, this is what I call our appetizer because we got more stuff coming after this. How do you feel about this amazing platter you see in front of you? I had no idea it was gonna be this big. He's like, oh, just a light bite before everything. And then he just... Yes. Good for you. <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, this is the largest platter that they have. I believe this is their oh. $150 platter, which is not that cheap. So uh, yeah, we, 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 we're going all out in order so that we can have fun with it and to show you some of the awesome foods that they got going on right here. Oh mm. That sauce rocked my world. Ooh. It's like really like something out of like Asia, like Thailand or Vietnam or oh, something. That was so bright and refreshing with the lime and the chili. It got a little kick. Do you feel it? Yes. <laughs> that was nice. All right. With some of this kimchi sauce. Just, oop, I don't want to give that too much on it. I feel like we're going to be tough critics because we're Korean. Oh, yeah. Especially with the kimchi. Can't mess around with Korean food, right? Mm-mm. All right. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh, that was like a nice salty, salty bite. Tastes I, just like kimchi. I kind of like that. It was just like, it feels familiar. Do you know what I mean? Right. Korean food's a little salty, but that was nice. I know. Wow. Okay. I, if look at this one. So this one is their lobster mac and cheese. Doesn't that look epic? Oh gosh. It looks so cheesy and they don't skimp on the lobster meat on anything. <laughs> Seriously, they huh? don't, no. But it doesn't end there. But look at this other one right here. This is their truffle, lobster truffle poutine fries. <laughs> oh, wow. That is so good. Bury me in this lobster mac and cheese. Cheesy, creamy, that is rich. That's everything that you want. Yeah. Mac and cheese. <gasps> Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of everything. Wow, this is so cheesy. This is oh no joke. Gosh. This is like cheese overload right here. This is like flavor town right here. It's not just cheese. Mm, I do taste a truffle in there too. Oh yeah, there's truffle in here. So that's where the earthiness from. Yes, do you taste the truffle? All right, so this one is, looks very simple, right? The lobster roll. Mm -hmm. And I heard the lobster roll is really one of the most acclaimed dishes on the menu so we can't miss out on this one are you amazed at how big the lobster pieces are this thing's towering like it's filled to the brim plus plus the brim <laughs> mm. wow okay that is really mind-blowing the bread is so good too. You know, that was the first thing I thought. It is so crispy, light and airy though. Like, I don't like bread that much, but it's buttery and so light and airy, it just like crisps. Mmm. Oh wow. Yeah, crispy, buttery. I like lobster rolls that have crispy, buttery bread. I think if you're gonna make it taste good, might as well just go all the way with it, right? All the way. So I'm sitting here at the bar and this is where you want to be for all the action because they're gonna make all the food right in front of you. Most specifically, the cold entrees, the appetizers, the ceviches. Mmm, like you just, it's almost like sitting at a sushi bar where you're gonna watch some really high quality, fresh, creative, delicious seafood made right in front of you. What better way than to start off with this? This is the Kampachi and Uni Tostada Premium Kanpachi ceviche topped with 20 grams of Santa Barbara uni. All of this looks so fantastic. I can already tell I'm gonna love this dish. Mm. Wow. And by the way guys, you gotta be careful because you can make a mess. It's a lot of lime juice on there. <laughs> wow, it's so fantastic. The rich, delicious yellowtail flavor, 
that you just really love, especially if you go to really great sushi restaurants. The creaminess inside of it and spicy too, but not overpowering spicy. This is like a really nice level of spiciness inside of it. The sourness as well as the creaminess of that sea urchin. And it's a little sweet as well, which is good. I love a nice, good, creamy, sweet sea urchin. Okay, so now I am moving on to my tacos. This is the taco de purple and su tinta. So it's like a braised and fried Mexican octopus that's been poached from what I heard. And that black um, stuff that's in the bottom that kind of looks like a black risotto is pretty much the uh, sofrito. All right, so here we go with the octopus taco. And uh, I can guarantee you this is probably the most expensive taco that I've had in my life so far. Mm. Mm. Wow. That is so mind-blowing. It really is. The octopus itself is the show stealer. It's beautifully charred all around. It's super tender too. Not like tough. It's so soft in your mouth. The sofrito complements it so well with the, the sweetness and the acidity of it. It's perfect. And now moving on to the grand finale. This is the big one, the big entree, the filet al carbon, which is the wood grilled branzino fish filet with cilantro rice, black beans, avocado, pico, as well as some of this handmade tortilla. Yes, this dish you can certainly have a lot of fun with. What is this, like lemon inside as well as some onions and some cilantro, I believe? That is crazy. There's like a whole party going on in this fish. Stuffed fish, all these delicious vegetables. Makes it so aromatic. Okay, so now let me try it with some of this tortilla and I'm gonna stuff some fish inside of it and be very generous. Mm. <clears throat> very delicious taco. And this rice with the black bean looks pretty killer too. Gotta get me some of that. Can't forget this. Very good rice. Rice and beans. How can you not have that with a meal, right? This in itself is a very complete meal because you got the fish, you got the tortillas, you got your sauce, you got a little bit of these tomatoes, and you got the rice and beans. Really, its own meal. They've been here since 2013, so running for about eight years right now. The highest rated seafood restaurant that you can find in Manhattan Beach, which is good enough for me, so definitely here's the go-to spot here. And they are most known for their oysters here. They do have scallops and mussels and cooked seafood as well, but the oyster bar, this is where all the rave is at. West Coast oysters, East Coast oysters, you got a nice variety going on here. I am super excited, especially when they are about to build this seafood platter, this tower that I'm about to eat. We got all the oysters lined up on the side from both the East Coast and the West Coast. Look at this, little neck clams. Haven't had this in a long time, especially raw. And some Peruvian scallops. Okay, ooh, it looks so juicy. Maybe what I'll do is begin by putting some of the cocktail sauce on here and start with this. You know, I love the fact that there's so many different kinds of sauces that you can put on top of it. You're gonna have so much different flavors, like fireworks going on in your mouth when you're eating these oysters. Mm. Wow, it just melts in your mouth. It's so soft. You know, you can taste the ocean, really like the ocean water. Little neck clam, right there. Awesome stuff going on. Mm. 
I could you not. That's the first time I've ever had a little neck clam raw. Ooh, it's so good though. What about the Peruvian scallops? Peruvian scallops with maybe some of this, this ponzu sauce on top of it. Mmm. That Peruvian scallop is so amazing. I've had raw scallops before, you know, sushi restaurants. It's very tender. But man, with that ponzu sauce. In fact, you can put any one of these sauces on there and it tastes great. This is the grilled Spanish octopus. It's kind of a new menu item, but it's already such a hit. On the bottom, the red is the spicy tomato sauce and papas canarias, which is the potatoes that you see kind of like around. And then this one is also a very big hit here. This is the Maryland blue crab cake, house-made dill pickles, whole grain mustard, ramalad. Definitely going to try that with plenty of this tomato sauce that's on the bottom. That is beautiful. That is a super soft octopus. Mm. And it's so crispy on the top too. It's tender on the inside, like super tender. None of that rubberiness. Charred and crispy on the top. And it's kind of sweet too because of this tomato sauce that adds that tomato sweetness to it. And I heard that they went through 32 different recipes before they settled on this one. That tells me they put a lot of effort into perfecting the crab cake, which is what I want to see right now. Oh. Wow, that thing melts like sushi in your mouth. Seriously. And now the moment you've been waiting for. Which do I think of these five is the best seafood restaurant? Now in this case, it's pretty challenging because I'm comparing different ethnic cuisines in seafood. So I know that it's not really an easy or a fair process, but I'm gonna try to do my best on what I think is overall the best experience of these five. Now keep in mind, this doesn't reflect poorly on any of the other four. All of them were so fantastic in its own way. They're all winners. So whatever restaurants you go to on this list, I'm sure you'll be very happy. So anyways, here is my vote right here on what I think is the best seafood restaurant of the five that I've been to here. So here we go. The winner is Newport. Yes, this is the restaurant that I thought was just fantastic in every single way. Chinese style seafood because the variety is so big. All the seafood there is so fresh from the tank and it all tastes so great as well. It tastes good if you go by yourself and if you go with a large group around the table, you're gonna have such a great time socializing and eating some great seafood there. Once again, all five of these restaurants were so fabulous and it's always so, so you cannot go wrong with any of these. Well anyways, I hope that that helps you in being able to find some of the best seafood restaurants to find in Los Angeles and definitely do check out the winner if you don't know uh, which of these five to go to. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode of Rockstar Eater. If you enjoy what I'm doing here on the show, give me a thumbs up. Comment on the section below if you've been to any of these five restaurants before. Do you think I'm right in choosing this particular restaurant as the winner? Are there any other seafood restaurants that I should have mentioned or covered in this episode? And finally, please subscribe so that you can get these food videos weekly. Hope you have a rocking day today, folks, and that you'll try some of this rocking food sometime soon. And be sure to also check out my other videos on the screen to see some of my other food adventures. So I'll see you guys in the next video.